Okay, here we have the X431 Pro 5. It is a tablet-based scanner made by Launch, and it is off. basically runs the Droid system. So anything you have on any Droid device you have here. We're going to go ahead and do this, and we're going to try to do a regen. This is a 2012 Passat TDI. Uh, it is the SEL model, not that that really makes a difference. We're going to do intelligent diagnostics, and that will scan for the VIN, and it will pull the VIN up automatically. I have had on older vehicles, I know the oldest I've tried is a 96, and it wouldn't pull the VIN automatically. I tried it on a 2001 uh, TDI Volkswagen, and it wouldn't pull the VIN. But whenever it doesn't pull the VIN, it'll give the option to either manually put the VIN number in, or you can scan, there's a little barcode in your door jam, and if it's clean enough, you can scan it. And I did scan my uh, Volkswagen Jetta, my 01, and it did pull the VIN that way. So that function worked for me. The 96 Chevy, I tried doing the, the scan of the barcode, but the barcode was pretty cruddy and it did not read it. So we got the health report. And I've said this before in one of my other videos, but the health report will pull and it'll check each individual module, hold down, whole way down the line, and it'll tell you if there's a fault found in that module. Uh, it does take a little longer, so I'm not going to do that. There's system scan, and it will scan all the modules and show you what modules are available. However, unlike the health report, it won't flag it if there is a fault in it or not. Uh, we're just going to go into special function. But if you did want to go in and just pick, just say you knew what you wanted to go to, you wanted to go into your engine, you hit system selection, go into engine electronics, whichever you wanted to go into, and go that way. Instead, we're going to go to uh, special functions, and it will bring up all these different options. Uh, I haven't tried a lot of these. The uh, only one I have actually done before was the regen, and that is right there, so we'll hit that. And I believe it's going to ask me, it fills most of the things in. For some reason, it doesn't fill the engine in, which is kind of odd, but it is the 2.0 TDI. We'll go ahead and hit start. And we're going to click that, and it will automatically start going through its system. So, and this just shows you what it's looking for, what, what it needs to see to be able to do the test. I hit continue. And it's in neutral or park. Park brakes on. Hood is closed. It tells you to turn on all the electronic stuff. He sees anything that pulls power from the car battery. And what that will do is it'll actually put more load on your alternator, causing the engine to work harder and create more heat. And in this particular test, heat is what you want because you want your exhaust getting hot. Tells you the warnings, uh, risk of fire, etc. It's probably going to tell me there's basically there's no reason. Nothing's requiring a regeneration, and it asks you if you want to end the test. I do not want to end the test because I want to show the test going through. So I hit no, and it just does this little system check. Uh, I think it's mostly checking ambient air pressure and checking some other. I'm sure it's reading other things because it keeps going through that a couple times. So it tells you to increase the speed to 2500 RPM. So we're going to rev it up slowly. And it tells you release. Go ahead and release. And it tells you you're good. So you hit, no, no, you don't have to continue on that one. It goes through. So it tells you, there's the one. It's not necessary to hold the, bar or the uh, throttle pedal the whole way through your test. Uh, I did have a buddy with a snap-on that you actually had to hold the throttle the whole time, which was kind of annoying because it is a long test. Depress the brake, release the brake, depress the accelerator, release the accelerator, and then it is automatically going in. Now, I will say, if you hold that accelerator down too long or the brake down too long after it tells you to release it, 
and it seems like it, it'll want to kick you out of the test. Uh, but right now my foot's off the throttle and it is automatically going through. And you'll notice now I do have a light out, that's why it's got the light one up there and of course the park brake's on. But you'll see a little glow plug light blinking. That's normal. Uh, it did that the last time I regen it too. That's not always on on this car. But you can see the turbo temperature. That's your actual temperature before the turbo, I believe. And then the one right before the particulate filter. Uh, if you're familiar with this, I would say that's probably like the DOC temperature. And most likely in between the DPF and DOC temp. Somewhere in between. And then, of course, the downstream of the particulate filter would be your DPF outlet temperature. And as you can see, the temperature is increasing. Uh, and you can kind of, if you ever regen vehicles before, you kind of get that exhaust smell. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's, it's an odd smell if you've never smelled it before. Uh, but I have done this test once before, so being that it is fairly clean DPF it's probably not going to increase the speed really quick or the I'm sorry the temperature really quick but that's pretty much all I'm going to film because like I said this is a long test it, it'll it'll burn this thing for like 45 minutes or so and by burn obviously I mean that's it's in your exhaust you're not burning your vehicle that would suck But it is a good idea to keep an eye on it, and I like to at least see it get right around five, six hundred degrees. Because at that point, what it will do, at least on the trucks, I'm not sure on these cars, but on the big rigs, once it hits about five to six hundred degrees, it'll start putting fuel into your exhaust, and it will burn in the DOC and everything else, and it'll actually get anywhere from 800 to 900 degrees roughly uh, but we're not going to sit here and watch that because it's going to take a minute so for the sake of this video I'm going to go ahead and end it here and if you guys have any questions or want to see any other functions that I don't show uh, just let me know and I'll try to hook up to the car in a, in a reasonable amount of time and see if that function is available I know there are some uh, some bi-directional tuning and stuff you can turn on and off also uh, but for now thanks and if you like it subscribe i appreciate it and stay tuned for more footage of this tool on just about every vehicle i can get i'll i'll hook to and, and at least show something uh, thanks for watching